see. Um, the only call on this point. Hello? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't have time now. Bye. Sorry, I um, shouldn't have answered it all. Okay, um, I want to do some more Feynman diagrams today, and um, the the uh, computation is one that is um, going to be the scattering of a charged particle by a neutral boson in the theory that we've been talking about, which is um, one that has the interaction Hamiltonian, which is G psi dagger of X, psi of X, psi of X. So these are still spin zero fields for simplicity, and they uh, are therefore boson fields. And uh, they're scalar fields. And um, but apart from that, it has the structure kind of that uh, that is typical of the standard model. That is to say, the standard model has um, this structure of charge fields, but they're spin one half fields, and then this one. It's sometimes a spin zero, but more often a spin one field. And the coupling is uh, gauge invariant. But the structure is, is, is pretty similar. And so what we're going to look at is now the scattering. I mean, remember last time we did the scattering of two charged particles. And we had Feynman diagrams that looked like this. And then, um, actually, no, it was a scattering of a particle by an antiparticle. And we had, if I recall, these were the two diagrams that we had last time, right? It was a scattering of a particle by, by the antiparticle, right? Okay. This time, I want to do the scattering of a particle by a boson, and in fact, I think I drew it wrong. Um, we're going to have two diagrams. One is the particle and the boson come in, the particle goes across and goes out, and the boson goes out. That's one diagram. And um, the other diagram is the Notes here. Ah, yes. The other one is the particle. Oops. The particle goes in. The boson goes out. Particle goes in. Boson goes out. Um, particle goes across. Goes out. Boson. So these are the two uh, diagrams we're going to do today. And what I'm going to ask you to do for homework is to consider to consider the case. Actually, what I was saying, what I was thinking of assigning for homework was do these diagrams with the antiparticle boson scattering, but it seems to me that it might be better to, to ask you to do these diagrams for particle-particle scattering. In other words, it would look like this. Well, this may be too easy, so maybe I should ask you to do both. Um, actually, I shouldn't draw them for you. So let me, let me say two for homework, particle-particle scattering. And uh, shall these be done due Monday? Because it's this is 
very similar to what I did in class Wednesday and Monday of the past week. So it seems to me that it's reasonable to say, well, why don't we have this by Monday? Is that reasonable or not? Okay, so let me, um, but let me say I'm also going to assign this diagram but for anti-particle boson scattering. So I want you to pay attention to what I'm doing here. All right, once again, the, the S matrix element is P1 prime, P2 prime, time ordered product, E to the minus I, integral, Interaction Hamiltonian is G4 of X. And this chalk is really boring. Um, so in the diagram that you have drawn, what is the direction of time? Mm -hmm. is it time goes up. And this horizontal line is meant to indicate that these two vertices, as a space-time diagram, uh, one could be earlier or later than the other, and it, well, one would be earlier later than the other, but this one isn't necessarily first or second. <coughs> the state and the university are in serious financial state, but to buy cheap chalk like this, I think it's going too far. We should just buy better chalk than Oscar. Okay, well, remember in the Pest and Schroeder norm, these states have twos in them, uh, have two P zeros in them. So we pull out the square root of the product of twice all the energies. That is 2P0, 1, 2P0, 2, 2P0, 1, 1, 2P0, 2. And what we have left in our vacuum creation operator P1 prime. An annihilation operator, what am I saying? Annihilation operator P2 prime. This is for the charged particle. This is for the boson. Uh, time ordered e to the minus i integral h e to the x. A uh, dagger P1, C dagger P2. By the way, I've done this um, from uh, on my own without looking at any book, and so the possibility exists of mistakes. And so you should um, trust but verify. Yes. Just a question on the, the second diagram on the first line. You said that was the one you, you asked us to do it for extra credit? Uh, That's right. But um, when you were drawing it, then it had a, a horizontal line. For oh, for yes, it should. Oh. Bravo. But of course, you know, whether this line, whether that line is horizontal or vertical doesn't. It should be horizontal. You're right. But when I drew it vertical, I was drawing it the way, frankly, most people draw it. Mm -hmm. okay. What is the difference in meaning? The difference, what, what he's pointing out quite correctly is that when you draw it horizontally, what you're saying is that uh, what could happen first is that out of the vacuum could appear the, the boson, the particle-antiparticle pair, and then later in time, the boson could, uh, could um, interact with the incoming particle-antiparticle. So this could be later in time. That's um, so. There are never um, vertical lines in the climate diagrams in general. You shouldn't have vertical lines. I should throw it with my right hand. I guess if I'm right. Anyway, good point. In fact, you really should correcting mistakes. You can too. I should. 
Ready? Here comes another one. Jack. Okay, so let's let's let me get on with it. Any other any any questions? So we have this interaction in Hamiltonian, and, and a lot of the stuff I was trying to read, they always see the, the, the phi four interaction. Oh, phi four, yes. Um, how, when is there? I mean, we'll probably get into that, but when? I, I don't really know when I use one over the other. So well, it would depend on what first. theory you were dealing with. <laughs> this thing, I think, is more instructive. It's also a little bit simpler. Um, well, and sometimes one puts a full factorial in the denominator. Ready? You just asked your question. <laughs> So can you just say really quickly when when you use one or or, or or let's see who asked? I don't even know who it is. <laughs> now I'm losing. I think I, I think I asked. Oh, <laughs> right, you were well, saying you were saying. Could you just say really quickly like when we use one over the other? Um, or well, it's it, very briefly. It, frankly, when you just have this or just have that, what you're dealing with is a pedagogical example in order to teach people how Feynman diagrams uh, come about and how to understand them. That's what I'm trying to teach you guys. Once you understand them, then the procedure is that with your understanding, if you have a particular theory, then you have a particular set of fields of interacting cubic and quartic terms, and then you uh, figure out what process you're looking at and then you just go through this. And the first couple of times you do it in, um, do it the way I'm doing it with, uh, by deriving everything. But after you've computed one or two uh, scattering amplitudes in a given theory, you then get, you, you know, with practice, you get much better at it. And then, so then you start just applying the, the Feynman rules as defi as uh, exhibited in Eskin Schroeder or in Weinberg. And then you apply them to whatever physical theory you're talking about. Now, in, in the real world, what you've got is one theory that you can consider by itself to high accuracy is just quantum electrodynamics. And then the interaction Hamiltonian is um, I'll say plus or minus E, because E can have either sign. And then it would be psi bar gamma mu uh, psi uh, A mu of X. That would be quantum electrodynamic. Now, if you're instead dealing with um, the standard model, then you'd also have the weak interactions, and then these would be uh, a, a two vector of, a two vector or a three vector of spin one half fields according to what you is. So let's suppose you're doing quantum chromodynamics or simplicity. Oh, simplicity, what a joke. But um, then um, this thing would be replaced by something like. Um, psi A of X, and I'm just sort of doing this um, uh, that's one way of thinking of it. Um, there's a neater way of writing it. Um, Although actually that's, that actually is the right way of writing, but then you have a strong interacting coupling constant there. So, and these are then the generator, the three by three generators of SU3, or eight of them. 
and these then are the eight long fields. Um, Just to make sure I understand these two diagrams if you're going. The, the ones that we're doing now. The first one, you're coming in and scattering the clothes on and changing the momentum. And then reemitting, or I mean, maybe later reemitting. But those happen at either time, right? You're right. And the other one's doing the exact opposite. I mean, are they different? The other one is doing the exact opposite. The other one is. Yes. The other one has. Um, yeah, right. The other one, the, the over here, the particle emits a boson, yeah. goes across, absorbs a boson, and then goes off as a particle. But are, aren't you saying that on the horizontal line, it doesn't matter which order these things happen? What I'm saying is you've got to include processes in which this occurs first mm -hmm. and which this occurs second. Okay. In okay. time, and the same thing here. This occurs first, and then second. Okay. okay. Let's see. Do you, do you want another chocolate, or are you trying to preserve your teeth? Sure. All right. Uh, actually, why don't I call these two E's? That's that's what Preston Schroeder sort of doing. I think it's a slightly better note. Okay, well, clearly this, uh, this process, you're going to need um, the lowest order would be second order because you need to annihilate, you need to stop these two creation operators and start these two annihilation operators in a sense. Okay? In other words, you need to create the particles that these will annihilate and you need to annihilate the particles that these have created. I don't like to use the word annihilate because when I have to write it down, it has so many letters and I always hesitate because I can't remember how to spell it. So I like the word stop. Um, I can't even take one stroke. The trouble is, I mean, this is what happens in all sorts of organizations. People who order the chalk aren't the people who use the chalk. Right. So AP1 prime, CP2 prime, minus I squared. Was there a question? Over 2, integral time ordered product. Let me just write this as psi dagger psi phi at x1, psi dagger psi phi at x2, and then uh, d fourth x1, d fourth x2, and then a dagger p1, c dagger p2. Okay. All right, so um, let's focus on this boson. This boson that's coming in can be stopped either at uh, x1 or x2. And if it's stopped at x1, well, it could equally well be stopped at x2. And so if we say it's stopped at x2 and multiply by 2, then that's fair. And so we're going to say, uh, stop uh, boson P2 at X2. Okay. So then this uh, S matrix element is uh, a minus from the minus I squared, the 2 cancels, and I forgot the G squared. So it's minus square root of two P's, G squared back to A P1 prime, C P1 prime, integral time order product. And let's just say psi dagger, X1 psi, X1, phi, X1, psi dagger, X2, psi, X2. And now instead of phi of x2, I'm going to write the positive frequency part, which annihilates the particle, and I'm just going to drop the negative frequency part. So dq, q 
pi q root 2 q 2 0 c q 2 e to the minus i q 2 x 2 a dagger p 1 c dagger p 2 vacuum and I still have the p flow of x minus p flow of x. So that's the picture. Now remember c, c dagger, our commutation relation would be c of p, c dagger of q, 2 pi q, delta q, p minus q. This is Preston Schroeder, Weinberg, leaves out the 2 pi. And so the next stage is we've got minus square root of 2 e's, but now we have a square root of 2 p 2 0, a g squared, and vacuum is 1 pi c q 2 pi. You can see why Feynman introduced these rules and why people adopted them enthusiastically. To go through this every time would be really time consuming. But to go through it when you're learning what's going on, I think, is probably useful. Psi dagger psi, let me just say psi of x1, psi of x1. And now, what is this? This field phi of x1, inasmuch as the boson was stopped at x2 by choice, the other one has to be created at x1. And so this has to be phi minus, the negative frequency part. And then what's left here is psi dagger x2, psi of x2, close parentheses, and what we have is e to the minus i, p2 x2, taking into account that we've got this delta function of 2 pi q. And what's left is a dagger p1 vacuum, still d4 x1, d4 x2. Okay. Well, the next thing is, of course, to write this as an integral, write the negative frequency part explicitly. And to save time, what I'm going to do then is just erase this and stick it in here. In fact, I might be able to write like this. Integral p cubed q2 prime over 2 pi cubed root 2 q2 prime 0. And then this will be c dagger q2 prime e to the i q2 x1. Do you want me to remind you what the positive and negative frequency parts are in each of these fields? Or is that something that you've already seen and it's in your notes? What do you think? Shall I write them down? I think we're done. Okay. All right. Well, clearly this with that is going to give 2 pi cubed delta cubed of p2 prime minus q2 prime. And the result is that the 2 pi cubed is going to go away. We're going to get the 2 q, I'm sorry, 2 p2 prime 0 here. And that's going to go away. And q2 is going, that should have been a q2 prime. That's going to turn into p2 prime simply. 
and then this one was drawn away. All right. So, all right. So now, now we have two things, two choices. This charged particle that's coming in can be stopped either by psi of x2 or by psi of x1, by the positive frequency parts of either one. And that gives us, that will give us, that choice will give us two different Feynman diagrams. It will distinguish between, we've already said that this is x2 because we're stopping the boson at x2. And so if the incoming charged particle is also stopped at x2, we get this diagram. If it's stopped at x1, we get that diagram. Okay. All right. So let me write the two diagrams. Stop. A dagger P1. I mean, this is absurd. Isn't this absurd? Mr. Chairman, we need better chalk. All right. Stop at x2. This gives us S1 minus the square root of two E's G squared over square root of two P202 E P5 zero. Okay. Vacuum A P1 prime integral time order product. Okay. Now, so let me write this. We've decided to stop it at x2, so we have psi of x2 dagger, but then this psi is just the positive frequency part of x2. And then we have e to the i P2 prime x1 minus i P2 x2. And then we have this a dagger P1 vacuum E4 x1 D4 x2. And now the rest of this is going to be psi of x1, but over here, it's then x1 in this S1 diagram. In fact, let me draw the S1 diagram. This is the one where both particles are stopped at the vertex x2. And so this is what the diagram looks like. Sort of a space time diagram. The Feynman diagrams are both space time diagrams and momentum diagrams. And now, um, what's going to happen? Well, the particle has to be created at x1 then in this process. And so what we have then is psi dagger negative frequency part at x1. And psi dagger negative frequency part is the adjoint of psi plus positive frequency part. So let me just write that down for you. Psi dagger negative frequency part is psi positive frequency part dagger. So psi dagger, negative frequency part is psi plus positive frequency part. Psi plus dagger. Psi positive frequency part dagger. Okay, so that's S1. On the other hand, S2. Let me get us, let me have them both here. So, just to kind of clarify this, I don't know, visually what you put there. If I was doing that to the, the Feynman diagram, I would, I would flip the 
<laughs> I, would, I would flip the arrow one way because because I'm switching it from negative to positive, but since it's an antiparticle, then I'm flipping it again. Is that kind of what that's doing? In other words, you want to understand this. So it, it would you want to understand this? Is that the question? In, in terms okay. Of All right. Let's just do it in terms. Because you're making your flipping arrow twice, once for the. the well, 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 here. No. These are actually. I mean, if you want to think of it in terms of uh, uh, diagram, fine. That's good. I'm, I'm not thinking of it that way at the moment. I'm just thinking in terms of operators. So, what we want here is the thing that's going to be able to create the charged particle so it can be annihilated by this operator. Okay? And so. What will do that is, in fact, let me go over to this board here and just let me write down these 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 equations, even though they're not you don't really need them because you sort of know them. A psi of x, some positive frequency particle is the integral p q p two pi q root two p zero. A sub P E, and I don't remember what the sign is, but I have written it down. Okay, minus in this record. So that's the positive frequency part. The negative frequency part of the field. Psi minus is integral dqp again of those two pi cube root two p zero. But now it's dp dagger e p i p x. And this doesn't have anything to do with British petroleum. Um, okay. Now, what is psi plus dagger? Or let's let's Oh, I don't know where this, I don't know which to write down the way. Let's write psi dagger part down first. Psi dagger, positive frequency part. This will be an integral dqp over 2 pi q. Well, basically, you just take the adjoint of, of this field here and look for the positive frequency part. So you take the adjoint and you get dp e to the minus i dx root 2 p 0 and then psi dagger negative frequency part well that will be this thing of the adjoint so dqp 2 pi q root 2 p 0 a p dagger e to the i dx does it not also change the sign of the plane wave or the, uh, the sign on the exponential, the dagger? Yeah, but you dagger this and you get a plus. Uh -huh. And so the positive frequency part is, this is the negative frequency part of psi dagger. Negative frequency means you have plus something. And um, well, I don't know quite what to say. Anyway, these are the things. Okay, so what was this other thing that we were talking about? Namely, psi dagger minus, that's that one. Well, psi plus dagger, this, of course, is equal to psi plus of x dagger, right? You just dagger this and you get that. It's just nomenclature, you know. Yeah. Mary, Jane, Tom, Bob, Peter, Ralph. Of course, I completely lost my place. Okay, so S2 is minus the square root of two e's, g e squared over the square root of two, p two zero two, p two prime zero. 0, A, P1 prime, integral, time-ordered product, 
All right, now this one is stop a dagger p at x1, and so the diagram is the bosons coming in there, and the, this guy is coming in like that. Right. And so this one has to go this way and out, and um, this one can, so it's P1, P2, P1, um, so that's the diagram, but of course you can flip it around so it looks a little better. This, uh, so we stop this one at x1. So this is x1 again. Okay, so how does, uh, how does this look? Um, we've got a dagger P1 still vacuum. P4 of x1, P4 of x2. We have P2 on the side, P2 of x2, P2 of the eye, P2 of the eye, x1. And now I need to fill these things in. Okay. What we're saying is we're stopping at um, x1. And so that means we have psi plus of x1 here. And, okay. And this one, x2, is where This is where the thing is going to be created. In other words, we're using this one to stop the incoming charged particle, this one to create the outgoing charged particle. And then what's left is psi of x2 and uh, psi dagger of x1. So that's, um, that's, that's the picture for, for this. Now, let me point out something. Namely, just something in terms of um, let the, I don't know whether to say this now or later. We're dealing with bosons here, but I want to foreshadow what's going to happen when we deal with fermions. Exactly one, one piece that is completely attractive. All right, so this one here is going to annihilate that one. And I can probably, I mean, you realize, well, why don't I just put this in what it's going to do? Okay. In other words, this guy here is going to be an integral eq q1 2 pi q root 2 q1 0 a q1 e and um, minus i. Q1 and it is X2. All right. On the other hand, the same thing is happening over here. And so in diagram two, we have integral dQ Q1 e to the minus i Q1, but now X1 a Q1 over 2 pi q root 2 q 1 0 and so this will annihilate that one and now to annihilate that one it's going to have to go across these two fields 
If these were farming fields, and in other words, we're considering the case, everything here is bosonic and spin zero. But if we were doing the theory in which these are farming fields, and this would be then G psi bar psi phi, and something very much like that was used back in the 30s and 40s and 50s to do pion nucleon scattering. And they thought that the nucleon was an elementary part. Anyway, then let's pretend for a moment that the psi's are fermionic. Then we would get a minus sign as we pulled this annihilation operator across these two Fermi fields. What's left here is just pose. And so, but that would be two minus signs, so it wouldn't make any difference. And in both cases then, this goes away. The two pi cubed goes away. The two Q zeros are going away. We get two P one zero over here. And what happens is that minus Q one becomes P one. So this becomes minus I P one in this case, and this is gone. Now, the next thing is to have, is to write this in terms of the creation operator. But now look where the creation operator is in the second diagram. It's here. And so to pull it through, we have to go across the Fermi field up here. So there's going to be a minus sign. All right, so once again, let's just, this would be psi dagger minus, and so it's, okay. So let me write that. This would be integral D cubed Q one prime two pi cubed root two Q one prime zero A dagger Q one prime E to the I Q one prime X one. And now here we have the same thing, but it would be D cubed Q one prime two pi cubed root two Q one prime zero A dagger Q one prime E to the I Q one prime X two in this case. And so it would be a relative minus sign if these things were fermions in the second diagram. All right. So let me just write that down. Relative minus sign if fermions. Okay, but we're just dealing with bosons for simplicity. So this kicks out the two pi cubed, the two Qs comes over here, and that means that we cancel completely the energy factors. All the square roots cancel. So this is gone, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone. And then Q one prime is just Q one prime. And the same thing, all of this goes. And this is P one prime E to the I dagger. This goes. The notes are online. I think I forgot to make them readable, but I'll do that when I get back to the office. Okay, so this is, this then is what we've got for the two diagrams. And so these E's have all canceled. 
And so this top diagram is minus g squared, an integral vacuum time order product of psi of x1, psi dagger of x2, vacuum. So this looks very much like the propagator that we had before. And then we have these factors, e – let me see. We have x1 is p1 prime – well, of course, it's 9 here. p1 prime plus p2 prime. And the x2 factors are p1 plus p2, which is a minus sign. And that's everything. And then this one is minus g squared integral, but the extra minus sign is if we were dealing with fermions. And it's the same thing, essentially. Well, not quite. It's psi dagger x1, psi of x2. And then the factors are x1 is p2 prime minus p1. And the x2 is p1 prime minus p2. Okay. I see questions being directed in a non-trumpet direction. So the thing in the brackets, right? Once you time order it, that is what? Sorry. For time-length separation, those two are the same, right? If x1 and x2 are time-length separation. Well, not really. We'll see in a moment. They're very similar, but not. I mean, they're very similar. Well, let's see. This one, in other words, this one is going to turn out to be df of x1 minus x2. And this is going to turn out to be df of x2 minus x1. But I haven't derived that because I haven't yet shown how you do the propagator for charts in this field. Okay. All right. So let me do this calculation of what the propagators are. And let me first of all remind, well, let's do this over here. Let's swing the camera around to over here since we've got these formulas here. Let's consider the commutator of psi plus of x1 with psi minus of x2. Well, this will be integral dq p1 dq p2 2 pi to the 6 root 2 p1 0 2 p2 0 a p1 a dagger p2 e to the minus i p1 x1 plus i p2 x2. 
the commutator here gives you 2 pi cubed uh, delta function. And so what you get is the um, integral d cubed p1 over 2 pi cubed 2 p1 0 e to the minus i p1 x1 minus x2. And we call this delta plus of x1 minus x2. And I'm referring here to this equation 0.24 in the notes. Similarly, if you do psi dagger plus of x2 psi minus of x1, this is the same thing d cubed p1, d cubed p2 over 2 pi to the 6 root 2 p1 0 to p2 0. And then we have d p1, p dagger p2, e to the minus i p1 x2 plus i p2 x1. And this is then integral d q p1, 2 pi q, 2 p1 0, minus i p1, and now it's x2 minus x1, and this is delta plus of x2 minus x1. So now let's um, compute these, um, or let me go back over here, since we've got these, let's, let's figure out what the vacuum time ordered product of psi of x1 of x2 is what appears up there. This is vacuum theta of x10 minus x20 side of x1 side dagger x2 plus theta of x20 minus x10 side dagger x2 side x1 okay. Now, since these, uh, since the, well, let's just look at this. This had better be the negative frequency part, otherwise you get zero. This had better be the positive frequency part, otherwise you get zero. Same thing here. But by that argument, you can replace this by the commutator because when you change the order, you get zero. And similarly, you replace this by the commutator, and you get zero. Otherwise, you get zero. Now, you look over there, and you see we've just computed these two things. And so this is equal to theta of x10 minus x20 delta plus of x1 minus x2 plus theta of x20 minus x10 delta plus of x2 minus x1. And this is what we call either in Weinberg's notation minus i delta f of x1 minus x2 or <coughs> df of x1 minus x2 in Pesky-Troy notation. So that's what happens with the top time order product. Um, the bottom one uh, is, as I said, it's um, vacuum time order product of psi dagger x1 psi of x2 and now um, what we can say is well this is the same thing as this, but with two and one interchange. But in fact, 
Let's look at this in the, more carefully in the case in which it's um, a, in which these things were turning fields. So let me just write this down again as vacuum theta of x1, 0 minus x2, 0. In fact, um, what one does is one writes this as psi plus x1 psi x2. And then one must, if, if this were fer these were fermions, instead of having a plus, you put a minus sign here. So that's what we've got, and um, 
Now, we have a lot of delta functions coming up. Namely, do the X2 integration, and that says that K is... I just wondered if everybody was... I may have the sign wrong. Is that what you're saying? No, I just wondered if it was... But DS seems to me to be symmetric in X1 and X2. That is by interchanging X1 and X2. I don't think so. Did you still get a candy? Oh, you got the same one twice. Do you want to throw it back in the bag? Sure. I don't think so, because if you took a complex conjugate of this, you flip that, you flip that, but what's really crazy is you flip this. Flipping this one is not something that would give you the same information. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think that one is equal to the other. But if you... If they were space-like, they would be equal. If X1 and X2 were space-like, then you would need to change X1 and X2. All right, let's get down to the answer here. Let me just check this to make sure I've got this right. This is actually on my side. Sorry. Okay. We do the X2 integration. That gives us a 2 pi to the fourth, which cancels. A delta four of K minus P1 minus P2, which is to say that K is equal... We enforce K being equal to P1 plus P2. So this gives us minus G squared integral delta four K minus P1 minus P2. And then those same exponentials, I over K squared minus N squared plus I epsilon. The 2 pi to the fourth is gone. We still have the E4K, E4X1. And up there in the numerator, up there we've got... Well, we've done the first integration. So we only have left E to the I, X1, P1 prime plus P2 prime minus K. Doing the K integration forces K to be P1 plus P2. So we get minus G squared I over P1 plus P2 squared minus N squared. We can now forget the I epsilon. And we have integral E to the I, X1, P1 prime plus P2 prime minus P1 minus P2, which is what K is, E4X1. And so that gives us minus G squared, 2 pi to the fourth, delta fourth of total conservation of four momentum. So P1 prime plus P2 prime minus P1 minus P2 times I over P1 plus P2 squared minus N squared. Okay, and in terms of the diagram, this is the diagram where the two momenta come into P2, come into X1. And so this charged particle going across is carrying momentum P1 plus P2. And its propagator then is this thing here. I over that is called the propagator for that line. And similarly here, we do the X2 integration. 
And that tells us something more complicated. It gives us minus I G squared. I'm going to follow my notes. Integral delta 4 of K plus P2 minus P1 prime E to the I X1 K minus P1 plus P2 prime P4 K P4 X1 K squared minus M squared plus I epsilon. You do the K integral and what you get is minus I G squared integral E to the I X1 and now P1 prime minus P2 minus P1 plus P2 prime. So it's the same factor, same phase factor. Now the denominator is P1 prime minus P2 squared minus M squared. And so finally, this is minus I is too faint. Minus I G squared by the fourth delta of P1 plus P2 minus P1 minus P2 prime fourth and then we're dividing by P1 prime minus P2 squared minus M squared. And the picture here then is P1 prime P2 prime. In fact, because of energy momentum conservation, we can rewrite this in a way that's a little bit nicer. In other words, this thing can be written as P1 minus P2 prime squared. And then you see the momentum here is this one comes in with P1, gives up P2 prime, and so the momentum here is P1 minus P2 prime. And so the final sum, the final amplitude then, the final amplitude then is S is equal to S1 plus S2, and that's equal to minus G squared, two pi to the fourth, delta four, P1 plus P2 minus P1 minus P2 prime, times I over P1 plus P2 squared minus M squared plus I over P1 minus P2 prime squared minus M squared. And this one is the diagram. Well, and this one is the diagram. And of course, P1, P2, and P2. Okay, so those are, so that's the full amplitude. So, so for, for homework due Monday, why don't you guys tell me, which would you rather do? Would you rather do what I just did in class, but for the initial particle be the antiparticle? Or would you rather do what I did in the last two classes, but instead of particle antiparticle scattering, make it particle particle scattering?
Jones.